Hey, what's up guys? Coach Bobby here. I got a great, great, great workout for you guys. I call it C-Note Saturday. C-Note Saturday, but you can do it on any day. C-Note Saturday just sounds good. So C-Note, if you guys know, C-Note refers to a $100 bill, right? So C-Note means we're going to do 100 reps with every body part. 100 reps with every body part before you move on. Now you can do whatever body parts you want, whatever exercises you want, but I want you guys to choose an exercise and a weight that you can do at most 17 to about 20 reps when you're fresh, maybe 22 or so. So don't choose a weight or exercise that you can do 25 or 30 reps of because then it goes too easily and too quickly. So I want you guys to choose a weight and or exercise that you can do about tw about 20 reps of, 17, 20 reps of, right? And then you're gonna work your way through all your body parts. I did, I just did a full body workout. I did single limb, single limb for my legs and my back. I did rows, I did dumbbell presses, I did some abs, I did some curls, I did some triceps, I combined kickbacks and line triceps, you can do that too. And then I ended off with some shoulders, front raises, and lateral raises. Now again, you guys cannot move on to the next body part until you have done and finished 100 reps at this body part. So give it a try, guys. I'm gonna walk you guys through it as I go through the video. Give it a try. Let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, have a good one. All right, guys, so let's start off with a uh, single side or, or or unilateral movement for legs. You can do squats if you want. You can do, uh, you know, whatever you want to do for your legs. I choose to do a singular side movement because for back, I only have a dumbbell to do rows with. So I don't have a contraption that allows me to work both sides of my back at the same time. So there's no pull down, there's no TRX, there's no pull up. So for back, I'm going to use a dumbbell and do one side. So because of that, I want to do one side for my legs as well. So I chose a lunge, right? I chose a lunge to do uh, my legs with. I chose to do bands, resistance band lunges. You can do dumbbells or body weight, either one's fine. But we're trying to get to 100 reps, right? 100 reps. And it's not a race. Uh, but you are trying to do that uh, as fast as you can. You cannot move to the next body part until you have finished uh, the current body part. So it's called C-Note Saturday or C-Note Sunday because it sounds cool, but you are trying to get to 100 reps uh, at each station slash exercise slash body part before moving on, all right? So I'm doing lunges with the resistance band, all right? So if you have a dumbbell, uh, I prefer to load the same side at the working leg. So uh, we're going to go, you know, for our right side, we're going to step back with our left leg and we're going to load or have the dumbbell on the right side of our body. All right. For lunges, make sure we keep our chest up, right? We keep our knees behind our toes and we keep our chest behind our knees, right? We're not trying to rush it, right? You want to put that back leg down as late as you can. All right, there's a video on my YouTube channel that explains why I do reverse lunges uh, as opposed to forward lunges for a lot of reasons. Uh, but one of them is because it keeps your knees a little bit safer. You know, at the time of this video, I'm, I'm 47 years old. I've been squatting and, and lunging and playing sports for the better part of 30 something years, and I have relatively good knees. Part of that is because of how I have lunged and squatted for all these years, always keeping my knees safe, okay? So make sure that when we do that, we're not rushing it, we're, we're, our chest is up, our knees are always behind our toes, and our, uh, our chest is always behind our knees, all right? So if that can be your kind of your triggers, you know, what you think about when you're doing these lunges, that can be your, your cues, if you will, all right? So chest behind knees, right, and knees behind toes. Okay, chest behind knees, knees behind toes. I typically would touch my back knee to the ground for balance and to make sure I go deep enough. Um, 
but you don't have to. But I do touch the knee to the ground. I don't bang it, but I do touch it. But the cue, again, is chest behind knees, knees behind toes. Chest behind knees, knees behind toes. Put that back leg down as late as you can in the movement. Don't rush it. Very good, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. If you are not done with this particular uh, body part, you can hit pause on the video before we move on. All right, hit pause on the video, and when you move, when you're ready to move on, just unpause it and move on. All right, guys, going to back now, guys. We're going to back now. I chose to do single side leg movements because I'm going to do single side back movements. All right, so uh, we did uh, right side lunge. Right, right side lunge. Now we're going to do right arm row. Right, right side lunge. Now we're doing right arm row. Again, we're doing a hundred of each. All right, so for a row, uh, I prefer to do uh, my dumbbell rows off of a bench. Right, for a few reasons. Number one, it makes sure that you do get some leg work in. Right, and it, because a lot of times, you know, we're, we're trying to maximize time. So if you can get a little bit of glute work in, a little bit of leg work in by bending, that's a plus. It also teaches you guys to make sure that we are always engaging our core and keeping our core tight. All right, so that's very important. And thirdly, you know, you don't always have a bench available, right? If you travel or you have a, you know, limited space in your home, you might have a dumbbell with no bench. So if you train uh, rows and back and, and different movements without a bench, you're better equipped to be able to do things um, when you don't have everything available to you. So it makes the ability to work out and be consistent much, much easier. All right, so we're doing rows, dumbbell rows with no bench. Now for a right arm row, guys, your left foot should be at 12 o'clock, right? Your right foot should be at about three o'clock. Mine here is probably a little bit, uh, you know, not staggered enough probably, but you do want that, that right foot, the same side foot, at about 3 o'clock on the clock, so 2.45, 3 o'clock. So left leg facing forward at 12, your right leg is staggered at about 3 o'clock. Your butt has to be low, guys, enough to protect your lower back. Okay, keep that back straight and not curved. All right, we're trying to get to 100 reps again before we move on, right? Not a race, but you are trying to, trying to get done, you know, quickly enough to get some cardio in and to, you know, just to be on pace to, to get a good workout, right? And the beauty of it is we record every workout, right? We, put, we write down how long it took. I use my, my timer app to do that. But we write down how long it took so that we can use that as a coaching mechanism going forward, all right? So you can rest. There's, these are not timed workouts, so you can rest, uh, but you cannot move on to the next body part until you're finished. All right, so again, we're at 12 o'clock with the off leg, and we're at 3 o'clock, if, it, if it's a right arm row, we're at 3 o'clock with the same side leg. All right, the elbow goes to the sky as if you're pulling a lawnmower, uh, and you're just driving the elbow to the sky, squeezing the back. Go down slow, control the negative, always control the gravity part of the movement. Make sure we seat it, right? Not standing up too tall. Our off arm is on our leg. Right? Our off arm is on our leg to brace our bodies to make sure our lower back is protected. We're always making sure, guys, that we keep the back safe. Right? To do that, we must bend, we must engage the glutes right? to make sure our lower body is absorbing the weight and not our lower back. Right? So back is straight, not curved. Our legs are staggered. Right? We're sitting down in that seat. We're not popping up. And on this one, the off leg or this or the or this, you know, the, the 12 o'clock leg, we're using our arm on that same side to brace ourselves. So don't stand up, don't put your hand on your leg, put your forearm on your leg so you're low enough, right? And also so your body is is kind of braced and supported by your arm, right? Off arm on the leg, you know, feet staggered, butt down, back straight, elbows, elbows driving through the sky. All right, guys, so again, we're going to move on now. Uh, you know, if you're still going, press pause, 
on the video until you have finished this body part and then continue on to the next body part. All right, guys, now we're going to the left side. Okay, left side for both the legs and for the back. Again, I chose to do single limb or unilateral movements for my legs because I only had dumbbells for my back. If I had a pull down machine or TRX available, I may have chosen to do squats instead of lunges, right? But I did not. Uh, so we're doing lunges and rows for, for legs and back. So we did the right lunge, then we did the right row. Now we're gonna do left lunge and left row. Really quickly, I won't belabor the point, uh, but we're trying to keep our chest up, right? Our, our knees behind our toes, right? Chest behind knees, knees behind toes. We're not rushing it, good pace. We're putting our off knee to the ground if you want. That helps with balance and it ensures you go deep enough to get the glutes to work, right? Above parallel with your leg works mainly quadriceps. When you get below parallel with your leg, that works glutes or your butt. So the off knee touching the ground ensures that your body, that your leg gets low enough to get some glute action or glute activation, all right? So I use my off leg, I touch the ground, I do not bang it though, I control it. I touch the ground to make sure I go deep enough to get my glutes and to make sure I'm on balance and not, you know, falling down or, or getting off balance. All right, so again, chest up, right? Chest behind knees, knees behind toes. The off leg goes back slowly. It touches the ground without banging and you drive through. Again, we're trying to do, we're doing 100 reps for each body part. All right, so I'm going to move on now. Please pause the video until you finish 100 reps and then move on. I will see you at the next body part. All right, guys, here we go. We did the right side lunge. We did the right side row. We did the left side lunge. Now we're doing left arm rows. All right, so for the rows on the left side, it's the opposite of the right side. So now the right leg, the off leg is now the right. The right leg is at 12 o'clock. The left leg, the same side as the arm, is going to be at about 9 o'clock. So not 3 o'clock this time, at about 9 o'clock. Our base is nice and staggered so that our back is safe. Our lower back is safe. Our butt is down. Our back is flat with not too much of a curve, if any at all. Our off arm is supported by our leg. All right, so right leg at 12, left leg at about nine. Good supported, good wide staggered base. Our butt is low, sitting in that chair, right? Our back is straight with no curve to it. Our off arm is supported by the leg, all right? Make sure we drive our elbow to the sky, all right? We're going to 100. Before we move on, again, we're not rushing it, but you are trying to go at a pace that gives you cardio. If you can see in the video, I'm breathing hard because I'm trying to get this, this, this exercise done as fast as I can. I'm trying to get to 100 reps as fast as I can without rushing or jeopardizing safety. All right. When I'm done, I record the whole workout, every station of the workout, the rest periods, and total time. And I use that to compare my workouts across time to make sure I am getting better every single day of my life. All right. So staggered base, elbow to the sky, right, 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock, off arm supported, butt is down, back is flat, right, and we're driving the elbow to the sky, squeezing the back on every rep. All right, guys, so moving on to the next body part. If you're not done here, which is fine, pause the video until you finish doing back, and then we'll move on to the next body part. All right, guys, now it's going to get a little bit fun. All right, so now we go, go to dumbbell presses. Okay, so I typically, if I'm doing a full body workout like this one, if I'm, I'm going to do upper body, I, I prefer to do a pull movement first. So that means back 
or biceps. What that does is it allows your body to lubricate the joints, the push joints, so the shoulder, the elbows. As you get older, those joints need more lubrication and warming up. Uh, so doing a pull exercise, like a back or, or a biceps, will allow the muscles around the joint to get warm and the joints themselves to get lubricated and warmed up so that the shoulders and the elbows are not as uh, as vulnerable when you do your triceps or your or your chest movements, okay? So I do back first. If I'm doing back and chest, I'll do back first. If I'm doing biceps and triceps, I'll do biceps first. If I'm doing biceps and chest, I will do biceps first. So I typically will do a pull movement, a biceps or a back before I do a push movement, all right? So now we're on chest, right? So as you saw, I'm doing 70 pound dumbbells for this. Normally, or, or in the past, I have been doing this workout with 60 pound dumbbells. So I decided to go up, but 100 reps at 70s is a lot. So it might take me a long time to do that. So I've decided in this workout to see if it works fine for me to do alternating sets. So I'm still going to 100, but I'm going to go 70 pound dumbbells first set, then 60s, then 70s, then 60s, all the way up until 100. All right, so that's how it works. So typically you can do the same weight. Now most of these weights, when you get to the weights parts of these exercises, choose a weight that you can do you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 reps about if you're fresh, right? That makes it challenging enough so that the 100 reps total will be challenging. If you choose a weight that you can do 25, 30, 35 reps with, that's going to be too easy, right? And you'll be done too quickly and you won't get the benefit of the cardiovascular part of the workout. If you choose a weight that is too heavy, that you can only do you know, 10, 12 reps with, it will take too long to finish the workout, if, it's, if it even finishes. So I suggest a weight between the 15, 16, 17, and 20 range uh, to be the weight you use. And that goes for most of my workouts, even the timed ones. You know, the weights that you do for the, for the majority of the workout, workouts we do should be a weight you can do about 17, 18 reps when you are fresh. Like that, that allows you to get in and out of, of workouts quickly, um, especially when you're, you're tired, uh, as the workouts we do make you, um, because no rest really. And it allows you, you know, to go heavy enough to where you're building and breaking down muscle tissue. All right, so the rep range, uh, when fresh should be 17 to 20 ish uh, for everything we do right especially uh, with a, a C note Saturday type workout so again I'm going 70s uh, for one round and then 60s and then 70s and then 60s so I've done two already while talking uh, now I'm going to do my third round um, I'm not sure how many reps I have but I'm going to get to a hundred before I move on to the next body part, all right? So dumbbell presses. You can do push-ups if you want, right? That's fine too, all right? So the dumbbell press and the push-up, you have to make sure your arm goes past parallel. So for a press, that means getting low enough. I always say touch the dumbbells to your chest, the outside of your chest, right? Get low enough. If you don't go past the parallel point on the push-up or the press, you are working primarily triceps. So you must go past the parallel point of your upper arm for your body to activate the muscles in your chest. So a lot of guys and girls, they won't go all the way down on a push-up or all the way down on a press. That does not require full chest activation, right? So to do that, you must go below or past the point of parallel for your upper arm, for your chest to be activated. So make sure we do that. Every time we do a push-up or a press, make sure we that upper arm gets beyond the point of parallel so that that elbow joint 
should go past the 90 degree or at least to the 90 degree mark okay so I'll wait and show you or talk through one more uh, set if you will with the 60s to make sure I demonstrate and talk you through what that means but what that means is that that angle at the tricep at the elbow joint should be beyond 90 degrees in order for the chest to be activated right anything before that is mostly triceps and some shoulders and front deltoids to get the chest to work you got to get below that parallel point below that 90 degree point with the elbow joint all right so if you see here I'm going to show you guys and talk you through what that looks like if you see I'm also tired guys I'm going as fast as I can to get done all right so all the way up you come down to the point where that elbow joint is beyond 90 degrees right if I don't do that I'm gonna work mostly triceps and less chest so get that dumbbell down to the chest I would say touch that that inside of the dumbbell to the outside of your pectoral muscles if you're doing a push-up get that chest to the ground all right and then push it up all right lock it out my left wrist is broken so I can't really lock out that left side but try to lock out your arm on every rep all right guys so if you're not done with that go ahead and finish up you know get to your hundred reps and then I will see you guys at the next body part all right guys good job so far good job so far we've done back we've done legs and we've done chest all right so we're moving on so what I'll do normally guys is I will mix in some abs as a way to not only get my core worked and don't for, don't forget about the core and the abs but also to give my upper body a rest it's hard to go from chest right to more upper body so I would do abs in between of some kind to give my upper body and my body some rest while still making sure I get my six-pack ready for the beach all right so I'm choosing to do what I call knees the elbows knees the elbows as I call these are one of the best ab exercises because it does just about every part or works just about every part of your core all right so as a general rule guys write this down whenever you pull your lower body toward your torso so a leg raise a hanging knee raises all those movements that pull your lower body to your torso those work your lower abdominals in general so when you pull your your feet toward your upper, upper body that works your lower abs whenever you pull or bring your torso toward your legs that works your upper core your upper abs so when you bring your feet toward your torso that's lower abs when you bring your torso toward your feet that's upper abs all right so by doing this movement where you bring your legs up and you're bringing your, your, your elbows towards your knees that means you're working your upper and your lower abs at the same time right that's one and two number three by opening up your body and driving your elbows to the floor that gets your obliques a little bit it's not quite what it would be with a bicycle where you're twisting and getting your obliques but the opening up of your of your upper body does make your torso or your obliques activate just a little bit so the knees the elbow is a great exercise because it works your upper lower and some obliques all right so we're still going to a hundred guys we're gonna fight through this uh, and again this is meant to get your core work done but also to give your upper body a break before we move on to biceps and triceps okay so we're gonna open up uh, I try to make sure I have some rules that I that I abide by to make sure I'm consistent and so my rule here is I try to make sure I open up my torso every time and drive my elbows to the, the ground and then my legs go all the way out straight close to if not touching the ground and then my knees and my elbows touch on just about every rep so elbows to the ground elbows to the knees open up the body each time and then contract 
all right? So get your 100 in uh, of these, or you can do something else, crunches or some ab exercise, but get your 100 in, press pause until you're done, and I will see you at the next body part. All right, guys, dumbbell curls now, guys. I'm going to do the same thing I did with my chest. I'm going to alternate between 40-pound dumbbell curls and 35-pound dumbbell curls. Normally, I would do 35s. I have been doing 35s, but I'm getting stronger a little bit, so I'm going to alternate. I'm going to go 40-pound dumbbells for a set and then 35-pound dumbbell curls for a set. All right? When I do my, my preferred bicep movement is the double dumbbell curl with a rotating grip, right? That allows you to get the most benefit from the movement, okay? If you do a supine grip or palms forward grip the whole time, that's fine. It'll, that, that movement will give you consistent pressure and activation on the bicep, but you cannot go as heavy. So that's more of an isolated movement, right? And it doesn't work the whole head as you would with a rotating grip. So I prefer to rotate my 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 wrist, my grip, right? From from neutral to supine, neutral to supine, right? And that would allow you to work the entire head of the bicep, right? The front, the, the side, the brachili, which is between your bicep and your tricep, and it gives you the best overall movement or the best overall activation of the bicep. So again, I choose to, to do this. That's my preference. You don't have to do that. You can do hammers, you can do supine, you can do barbell. Uh, I, I prefer uh, dumbbells over barbells because they're, you know, the, the variety you can do with it is, 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 is greater. It, it require less space. You can get in and out of them more quickly. Uh, so most of what I do is, is dumbbells. But you can do barbells or, or easy bar curls if you want. Again, the goal is to get to 100 before you move on to the next body part. Okay, so choose a bicep movement of your preference. Choose a weight that you can do between 15, 17, 20 reps of, uh, and then get to 100 before moving on to the next body part. All right. One more comment about the curls I want to emphasize. When you do your curls, many people will bring the elbow back too far in their movement. What that does is that shortens the lever, the forearm lever. You want to make sure that lever is long, right? So the arm can swing a little bit, but when you start bringing that, that forearm and hand up, make sure that forearm lever is kept long. Don't bring the elbow back as to shorten that lever and minimize the activation and the work required for the bicep. All right, guys, so I go neutral grip, I rotate them up. You can choose whatever, uh, you know, bicep movement you like, but get to 100 and then move on. All right, guys, if you're not there yet, press pause, and I will see you at the next body part. All right, guys, going to triceps now. Again, we went pull, push with the back and chest. We're doing pull and a push with the biceps, triceps. All right, so I'm going to choose to do two different movements for my triceps. All right, first up, we're going to do lying tricep extensions. Some guys call these skull crushers, right? Again, I'm, I'm choosing to do dumbbells because they're safer. They allow you to get in and out of the movement more quickly. They're more flexible. They require less space. For a lot of reasons, I do dumbbell work as opposed to barbell. But barbell work is fine, guys. All right? So bring that dumbbell. Again, you're trying to go past the point of parallel, right, for that for that forearm joint. Right? You want to activate the triceps, right? Pivot on the elbow joint only, right? Try to minimize the movement of the upper arm. All right, so I'm doing line tricep extensions for movement one, right? It can be the same movement if you want. I just chose to do two different movements in this. We're still trying to get to 100 reps total, all right? So that's line tricep extensions. I did 30-pound dumbbells for this. Now I'm going to do standing double arm kickbacks, right? Standing 
double arm kickbacks. Now the activation of the tricep and the bicep is dependent upon how much the forearm lever moves. Right, so for the for the, the uh, bent over kickbacks, you must make sure that you don't move the upper arm that much. You want to pivot on the tricep, I'm sorry, the elbow joint only. So pivot on that elbow joint only so that the forearm lever moves as much as possible. Okay, so minimize the upper arm movement, right? Keep the elbow up and then pivot at the elbow moving the forearm lever as much as possible. Very critical, guys. Very critical. All right? Same movement, same idea for the lying triceps. Make sure we pivot only on the elbow joint, right? Bring that hand close to the uh, temple. I would say bring the hand to the temple and then lock out the arm at the very top, right? Pivoting on the elbow joint, okay? Again, I chose two movements. You can do one movement. You can do press downs. You can do, you know, uh, lying scotch crushers with the easy bar or straight bar. You can do dips. Uh, choose something for your triceps that, that, that is challenging, guys. Again, you want to do something that you can do between 17 and 20 reps about a movement and a weight that you can do between 15, 17, 20 reps or so, right? You don't want it to be too hard where getting to 100 is too challenging. You don't want it to be too easy where you get done too quickly and you're not forced to kind of kind of go to failure, all right? So I chose lying triceps with, with extensions with 30-pound dumbbells, and I chose double arm standing kickbacks with 20-pound dumbbells. All right, guys? So get through those movements. Uh, press pause if you're not finished yet, and I will see you at the next body part. Alright guys, almost done. Moving along. Okay, so normally I would be done with this workout after doing triceps. I don't always do shoulders. Okay, because for a lot of reasons. Shoulders are the most vulnerable of our body parts. So because they move in every direction. So many people have issues with their shoulders because we always use them. So I don't always add more work to my shoulders because I do enough work on my shoulders with, with other things like squat, goblet squats and push-ups and things of that nature. Uh, rows, get your rear delts, your rear, sho your rear shoulders. So a lot of things we do already work the shoulders. So I don't usually add more shoulders to my workouts. If I do, then I do, right? So today I have more time, so I'm adding uh, two shoulder movements to my C note Saturday workout. So I'm doing 100 front raises followed by 100 lateral raises. All right, so first up, I'm doing frontal raises. Okay, so frontal raises, the front deltoid is a stronger part of the shoulder. So for this movement, you can go a little heavier than you can for the next movement, which is lateral raises. Okay, so for this one, I'm doing 20 pound dumbbells. Now, if you go single arm, you can go even heavier. I prefer to do double uh, limb movements with just about everything because of time. Not because I, it's better, but I'm trying to get done with my workouts quickly. So I prefer to do both sides at the same time when possible. Okay, so this is a frontal raise, right? Frontal raise for the shoulders, for the front deltoids, okay? Now with this one, you can bend your arm a little bit. Many people, you know, they'll harp and preach about having your arms straight. You do want them straight, but you do not need to lock your elbows. In fact, I prefer you do not lock your elbows, all right? What I do want you to focus on, though, is make sure that the movement, in the movement, you lead with the shoulder. So I always use the mental and verbal cues to make sure that your shoulder is above the elbow, which is above the hand. So shoulder above hand, sorry, shoulder above elbow, above hand in the movement, all right? So that, inf that ensures that you lead with the shoulder, right? So if you mentally just think about that, every time you raise your arm, make sure the shoulder is the, is the part of your arm or your arm that's moving it, not the forearm, not the hand. 
So lead with the shoulder. Again, with these, I go neutral grip at the bottom. That means palms facing in and the dumbbell at the side of your body. Many people would keep the dumbbell or the bar in front of their body. That's fine. You cannot go as heavy doing it that way. All right, but it's fine. Your shoulder does, does not get any rest when you do it that in that way, which is fine. I prefer to go a little heavier and give my shoulder a brief rest at the bottom of the movement. So I go neutral. I do what's called a neutral grip at the bottom of the movement and then I rotate my palms down as I go up. All right, so I go up, slight bend in my elbows, arms straight. I go palms down at the top. I go neutral grip at the bottom. So neutral, palms down, neutral, palms down, neutral, palms down. A little bit of a swing is fine. I always say move as your body would naturally move when you're doing weight training, right? You don't need to restrict it in a way that's uncomfortable or unnatural to how your body would move naturally. All right, guys, so do 100 of those reps. Hit pause if you're not there yet, and I will see you at the next body part. All right, guys, last body part. Last body part, we did legs and back first, right? We did lunges and rows. Then we did chest. We did dumbbell presses. Then we did abs as a break. Then we did biceps and triceps and then we did shoulders first we did the frontal raises now we're doing the last of everything the lateral raises all right guys so the lateral raise works the side of your shoulder that gives you the roundness to your shoulder okay so this is very important that we make sure that we do a lighter weight all right the lateral head of your shoulder is not as strong as the frontal or even the rear delt or rear part of your shoulder. So your deltoid, your shoulder, has three parts to it really. The frontal, the lateral, and the rear. Right? The rear and frontals are stronger. Right? In order, the frontal is the strongest. Then the rear. The lateral head rarely gets work. You rarely move anything in that direction. So that is the weakest head or part of your shoulder. For that reason, we have to go lighter on these movements. Okay, so I go 12 or 10. Usually I'll do 10 pound dumbbells for this one. Today, as I did with the chest, as I did with the biceps, I'm going to alternate between the heavier movement or heavier weight, 12 pounds, and my regular weight, 10 pounds. All right, so I'm gonna go 12 pound laterals, 10 pound laterals, 12 pound laterals, 10 pound laterals, all the way up until I get to 100 reps. All right, so there's a few keys to point out with the lateral movement the lateral raises right I prefer to do your best to keep that dumbbell or dumbbells at the side of your body right at the beginning of the movement and throughout the movement many people will bring the dumbbell to the front of their body at the bottom of the movement right that allows you yes to go heavier with the lateral raise right and for guys trying to build real big shoulders that's fine right but that works some of the front part of your deltoid which we already work with the front raises and any push movement so I prefer to keep the dumbbells at the side plane in the side plane of your body as much as possible as best you can it's hard to do but try to keep that the movement in the lateral or side plane of your body without bringing the dumbbell to the front of your body at either the bottom of the movement or throughout the movement all right number two as with the frontal raises we're trying our best to keep the shoulders at the apex or the top of the movement so we want to lead with the shoulders right and have the elbow under the shoulder and the hand under the elbow Right, that will make sure that you lead with the shoulder. Now, you can rotate your hands a number of ways, right? And I suggest you guys find the best angle of your hand that, that feels the best with your shoulder. Many people have shoulder issues, so you can, you can rotate your hands up, down, side. You can change the movement or the placement or direction of your hand to minimize any pain you might feel in the shoulder. 
But do your best, guys, to keep that, that movement in the lateral plane, right? So it's not going forward or backwards, really. But definitely not forward. We're trying to minimize the amount of work the front deltoid does and maximize the amount of work the lateral deltoid or side of the shoulder works. All right, guys? So that's it. That's all the movements we did. We did, we did legs and back. We did chest. We did abs. We did bis and tries. And we finished off with some shoulders. All right? 100 of each is the goal. If you want to start off doing 75 of each, that's fine. But we're trying to go through the, all the movements as fast as we can. All right? At your own pace, but as fast as you can. It's a great workout to kind of see where you're at. It's a great workout if you're trying to multitask and do things or do not have a timer to do a timed workout. But I suggest you guys try this and let me know what you guys think. All right? I call it C-Note Saturday, but you can do it on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It just sounds cool, right? C-Note Saturday. All right, guys? Enjoy the workout. You can pause it here until you finish, but enjoy it and leave comments on it and let me know what you guys think. Have a great day and keep pushing, keep grinding, keep getting better than yesterday. Steps in toward your journey, toward the process, toward the goal.